hello everyone this is a audio recording for visually impaired candidates and this is of lesson 2 that is liquid state and liquid crystals of physical chemistry and this is from pradeep's book and it is written by dr s c khetrapal so let's start from the introduction in a solid the constituent particles atoms ions or molecules are closely packed hence they possess rigidity and have a definite volume and definite shape in gases the molecules are completely free to move about therefore they have neither a definite shape nor a definite volume they fill up the vessel of any volume and also take up the shape of that vessel however in a liquid the molecules are not fixed as in solid and at the same time they have some freedom of motion though they are not as free to move as in case of gases thus they show a behavior in between that of gases and that of solids like solids they have a definite volume whereas unlike solids but like gases they do not have a definite shape they take up the shape of the vessel in which they are put this is expressed by saying that liquid state is intermediate between gaseous state and solid state as explained above the difference in the behavior of three states of matter is mainly due to the intermolecular distances of separation in a solid the constituent particles are closely packed almost touching each other and may be treated as hard spheres in a liquid the molecules are separated by small distances of the order of molecular diameters while in a gas the intermolecular distances are so large that the molecules can move randomly with the vessel these intermolecular distances suggest that the cohesive forces intermolecular force of attraction in a solid are very strong whereas in case of gases they are very weak and in case of liquids they are in between that is they are fairly strong to keep them in condensed state but not strong enough to hold them in a fixed position as in solid in fact all the characteristic properties of liquids such as vapor pressure surface tension viscosity etc arise due to the nature of the intermolecular forces existing in the liquids now next is intermolecular forces or van der waal forces the forces of attraction existing among the molecules of a substance gaseous liquid or solid are called intermolecular forces or cohesive forces these forces are of three different types as explained below dipole dipole attractions these forces of attraction um, occur among the polar molecules the reason for the origin of these forces is quite obvious polar molecules have permanent dipoles the positive pole of one molecule is thus attracted by the negative pole of the other molecule a simple example is that of hcl in which chlorine being more electronegative acquires a slight negative charge whereas the hydrogen n becomes slightly positive charged the dipole dipole attraction then take place among hcl molecule proof for the existence of dipole dipole forces if dipole dipole forces exist among the polar molecules they should have higher melting point and boiling points than the non polar molecules provided all other factors like molecular mass molecular shape etc are the same this is actually found to be so for example the non polar molecules n2 and o2 have boiling points 196 degree celsius and minus 183 Celsius respectively, whereas NO, which is slightly polar, has a higher boiling point, that is minus one hundred fifty one degree. Magnitude of dipole dipole forces now, as the charges at the ends of polar molecules are not as great as the charge of ions in an ionic compound, the magnitude of dipole dipole forces is therefore much smaller in comparison to ion ion attractions or ion dipole attractions. Further. whereas the force of attraction between two ions is directly proportional to 1 by r square the force of attraction between two dipoles is directly proportional to 1 by r to the power 7 where r is the distance between the ions in the former case and that between the dipoles in the later case consequently under similar conditions of temperature and pressure since the intermolecular distances are are very large the dipole dipole forces of attraction among the gaseous molecules are very small as the pressure is increased or the temperature is decreased the distance among the molecules decreases that is the molecules come closer 
As a result, the intermolecular forces of attraction increases and the gas changes into a liquid or solid. The magnitude of dipole-dipole forces in different polar molecules can be predicted on the basis of the polarity of the molecules, which in turn depends upon the electronegativities of the atoms present in the molecules and the geometry of the molecules in case of polyatomic molecules containing more than two atoms in a molecule. The polarities of the molecules are usually expo expressed in the terms of dipole moments of the molecules. For example, comparing the molecules of NH3 and H2O, the dipole moments are 1.49 diopter and 1.85 diopter respectively. Thus, though both have nearly the same molecular mass, the intermolecular forces of attraction are stronger in case of H2O than those in NH3. Consequently, H2O has higher melting point and boiling point than those of NH3. In fact, it is well known that whereas H2O is liquid and NH3 is a gas. Now next is hydrogen bonding. It is special case of dipole-dipole attraction. It occurs in molecules containing a hydrogen atom linked by a covalent bond to a highly electronegative atom but small in size that is fluorine, oxygen and nitrogen. Because of the large electronegativity difference between the hydrogen atom and the highly electronegative atom, the hydrogen atom acquires a significant delta positive charge and the electronegative atom acquires a significant delta negative charge. The positive hydrogen end of one molecule then attracts the negative electronegative atom of the other molecule. For example, the cases of HF, H2 and NH3 may be represented as shown below. Because of the greater polarity of these molecules, the intermolecular forces of attraction are stronger than the ordinary dipole-dipole attractions. That is why this type of intermolecular attraction is considered as a bond rather than mere dipole-dipole attraction. This type of bond is called hydrogen bond and is represented by dotted lines as shown in the examples. To sum up, hydrogen bond may be defined as the attraction of hydrogen atom of one molecule by the electronegative atom of the other molecule in case of compounds containing hydrogen atom linked to the highly electronegative atom that is small in size. Further, as shown above, in each case, the hydrogen atom is linked to two electronegative atoms simultaneously, one by covalent bond and the other by hydrogen bond. Thus, hydrogen acts as a bridge between the two electronegative atoms. This is sometimes referred as hydrogen bridge. Now, strength of hydrogen bond. As mentioned above, hydrogen bond is stronger than ordinary dipole-dipole attraction. However, it is much weaker than the covalent bond. The energy of hydrogen bond lies between 20 to 40 kJ per mole, whereas that of covalent bond is usually between 160 to 600 kJ per mole. Depending upon the electronegative atom, the strength of hydrogen bond follows the order. F F is greater than FH, F greater than OH, then O greater than NH, and then N. Dipole induced dipole attractions. Second is dipole induced dipole attractions. The positive end of a polar molecule may attract the electron cloud of a non polar molecule lying close to it, thereby polarizing it. Thus, the non polar molecules becomes as induced dipole just as it happens in case of iron piece is brought close to the magnet. As a result, attraction takes place between the polar molecule that is permanent dipole and the non-polar molecule that is induced dipole. Third is induced dipole, induced dipole attractions, uh, London forces or dispersive forces. It is easy to conceive ion-ion attractions, ion-dipole attractions and dipole-dipole attractions. However, the next very significant question is what intermolecular forces attract non-polar molecules to each? each other in the liquid and the solid state. The origin of these forces was proposed by Fritz London in 1930. Hence they are termed as London forces. These forces are thought to arise from the motion of the electrons. 
it is believed that any instant of time the electron cloud of the molecule may be distorted may be distorted so that a momentary dipole that is a dipole for short while is produced in which one part of the molecule is slightly more negative than the rest the momentary dipole induces dipoles in the neighboring molecules these are then attracted to each other exactly in the same way as the permanent dipoles the forces of attractions between the induced momentary dipoles are called london dispersion forces it may be pointed out that since all the molecules contains electrons london forces also exist in polar molecules however in case of non polar molecular substances london forces are the only intermolecular forces that exist magnitude of the london forces london forces are the weakest intermolecular forces their magnitude depends upon the following two factors first complexity of the molecules larger or more complex are the molecules greater is the magnitude of london forces this obviously due to the fact that the large electron clouds are easily distorted or polarized since the larger molecular size amounts to larger molecular mass it is often suggested that the magnitude of london forces increases with increasing molecular mass second is geometry of the molecules the shape of the molecules has significant effect on the magnitude of london forces for example n pentane and neo pentane have the same molecular formula c5h12 yet the boiling point of n pentane is about 27 degrees celsius higher than that of neo pentane this difference can be attributed to the different shapes of the two molecules the n pentane being a zigzag chain whereas neo pentane is nearly spherical the overall attraction between the molecules is greater in case of n pentane because there are more sites of interactions the molecules are able to come in contact with the entire length of the molecule quite often london forces are referred to as vendavel forces however it is incorrect to call london forces alone as the vendavel forces in fact vendavel forces in a general term which implies all the intermolecular forces it is interesting to mention here that based on the nature of intermolecular forces cohesive forces the liquids are classified into following types first ionic liquids such as molten salts second metallic liquids consisting of ions and mobile electrons third liquids such as water in which molecules are held together mainly by hydrogen bonds fourth molecular liquids in which the molecules are held together by van der waals forces which include interaction between permanent dipoles permanent dipole and an induced dipole induced dipole induced dipole london or dispersion forces next is mathematical treatment of intermolecular forces let us consider the interaction between a pair of molecules when the molecules come close together they are forced there there are forces of attraction and forces of repulsion between them experimental and theoretical studies both show that the attractive forces between a pair of molecules vary inversely as the seventh power of the intermolecular distance between them that is fa is equals to minus ka multiply 1 to the power 1 divided by r to the power 7 this is the first equation negative sign has been used because force is a vector quantity and if we take the center of one molecule as the origin with r is equals to 0 the force of attraction is in a direction opposite to the vector from r is equals to 0 to the second molecule that is these forces are of considerable magnitude when the intermolecular distances are of the order of little more than molecular diameter as in the case of liquids at very short distances of approach repulsive forces become applicable between the molecules but these are generally of small order in solids because the intermolecular distances are somewhat greater it is found that these repulsive forces vary inversely as the 30th 13th power of the intermolecular distance that is fr is equals to kr 1 divided by r to the power 13 this is the second equation the net intermolecular force between the pair of molecules is sum of attractive and repulsive forces that is 
F is equals to F A plus F R, which is equals to minus K A divided by R to the power seven plus K R divided by R to the power thirteen. This is the third equation. Instead of forces, instead of forces, it is generally more convenient to study their corresponding intermolecular potential energies. Potential energies is the amount of work done in bringing one molecule from infinity to distance r from the either molecule. That is, potential energy is equals to minus F dr. Negative sign is due to energy released, and here uh, it is from infinity to r. And uh, now, in the next step, minus k to the power a divided by r k a. Divide by r to the power seven plus k r divided by r to the power thirteen bracket is closed d r which is equals to k r upon twelve r to the power twelve minus k a divided by six of r power six. This is fourth equation. A plot of the potential energy due to attractive forces, repulsive forces, and the net forces versus intermolecular distance is given. Equation four is generally written in the form V is equals to four E bracket starts R naught by R to the power twelve minus R naught to the power R six, where E is depth of the well. R naught is intermolecular distance when V is equals to zero. The potential as given by the above equation is called Leonard Jones six twelve potential after the name of English physicist who made these studies. Now next is topic is structure of liquids. To study the structure of a liquid means to find out how constituent particles are arranged within the liquid. The following different studies help in to know about the structure of liquids. First, volume changes on fusion and vaporization. When a pure solid melts, the increase in volume is only about one percent, which is much smaller than increase in volume, which takes place when the liquid changes into vapors at the boiling point, which is about hundred to thousand times. Knowing that in a solid the constituent particles are arranged in a perfect order, the small increase in volume on melting shows that some disorder has been introduced. But large change in volume from liquid to vapor state reveals that disorder. From liquid to gaseous state is very large. Hence, we conclude that the constituent particles of a liquid are not considered as that in solid, but at the same time they are not disordered as that in a gas. Second is enthalpy of fusion and vaporization. The amount of heat required to melt one mole of pure solid at the melting point, called molar enthalpy of fusion, that is delta H F naught. is found to be much smaller than the amount of heat required to convert mo one mole of liquid melt obtained into vapor at the boiling point called enthalpy of vaporization that is denoted by delta h vaporization not for example delta h not f for ice is 6.1 kJ per mole whereas delta h not vaporization for water is 40.7 kJ per mole greater the amount of heat absorbed greater is the disorder introduced thus when the when we melt solid some disorder is introduced in the liquid obtained but this disorder is much smaller than the disorder introduced when we change the same amount of liquid to the vapor at the boiling point this again shows that the constituent particles of a liquid are not as ordered as that in a solid but at the same time they are not as disordered as that in a gas third x ray diffraction studies x ray diffraction studies of crystalline solids shows that the constituent particles within the solid crystals are arranged in a perfect order and this order extends up to the edge of a crystal this is called long range order Electron diffraction studies of gases show that the gaseous molecules have no order at all that is there is totally a chaotic distribution of molecules the structure of liquids is also studied with the help of x-ray or neutron diffraction method so that they can enter into the interior of the liquid rather than being reflected only from the surface if like gases the molecules in a liquid have absolutely no ordered arrangement there would have been continuous scattering of x rays without maxima or minima 
However, this is not the case. For example, the X-ray diffraction pattern of liquid mercury is shown. The diffraction pattern shows that there are one or two diffraction maxima at small angles, but as we move outwards from the centrally chosen atom, the maxima are damped out. This shows that in liquid, short-range order still exists, but there is no long-range order. It is convenient to study the location of particles in a liquid in terms of radial distribution function which gives the probability of finding a particle in the range dr at a distance r from another. These are easily calculated from X-ray diffraction pattern. In these cases, only the distance of neighboring molecules and not the angles from the centrally chosen one are studied. The radial distribution calculated from the scattering curve is shown. Next topic is theories or models of liquid state. Gases and solids are two extreme states of matter. In the former, there is a total chaos of molecules, while in the latter, there is a perfect order arrangement of its particle, which keep on vibrating about their mean position. In both cases, the mathematical treatment becomes easy and well-advanced theories have been put forward to calculate their properties, that is energy, heat capacity, entropy, etc. However, in case of liquids, the situation is not well defined. Example, cohesive forces are sufficiently strong so that they can exist in the condensed state but not strong enough to hold the particles in the fixed position. So that they have to do some translational energy. Hence, their theories are difficult to handle mathematically. Two common theories about liquids are briefly discussed below. First, vacancy or hole theory. This theory was put forward by Ehring and Rhee in 1933. This theory is based on the fact that liquids are generally less dense than the corresponding solids. This implies that the intermolecular space in a liquid is more than that in a solid. Ehring and Rhee put forward the important view that in a liquid, the intermolecular space was not random but comprised of holes and vacancies of the size of molecular diameters. Thus, a liquid can be considered to consist of liquid molecules and the holes randomly distributed between them. Due to presence of holes, the neighboring molecules can easily jump into them and thus show gas-like behavior. Those molecules which do not have a hole in the neighborhood cannot jump and show solid-like behavior. Using appropriate mathematical treatment, the mole fractions of the gas-like and solid-like molecules can be calculated. From these values, the thermodynamic properties of the liquid can be calculated. The results thus obtained for argon by Ehring and Rhee were found to be in a close agreement with the experimental values. Free Now, second theory is free volume theory. According to this theory, it is believed that in a molecule, in a liquid is surrounded by 10 to 12 neighboring molecules only a small distance away from the molecule these surrounding molecules thus from a cage or cell around the central molecule thus the central molecule has to move only though a small distance to collide with any of its neighboring molecules unlike in a gas where the molecules has, has to travel a long distance before colliding with another molecule Thus, the center of the cage molecule can move within the space shown by shaded area. The volume thus is available to a molecule within which its center can move is called the free volume. Assuming the potential field within the case or cell as spherically symmetrical, free volume can be calculated and this can be related to various thermodynamic properties of the liquid. Now, next topic is structural differences between solids, liquid and gases. The main point of differences between a solid, liquid and gas are summed up in the table below. Now we will talk about uh, solid, liquids and gas differences. First about solid, their X-ray diffraction patterns have well defined maxima. Now for liquids, their X-ray diffraction patterns have only one or two well defined maxima which damp out with distance. For gases, their electron diffraction patterns do not have any maxima. Solids, second point, the constituent particles are arranged in a perfect order, that is, there is short range as well as long range order. For liquids, there exists a short range order, but there is no long range order. 
for gases there is neither short range nor long range order rather there is a chaos of molecules third point the constituent particles are very closely packed hence they have strong intermolecular forces of attraction and hence possesses rigidity and a definite volume for liquids the molecules are separated by small distances though the forces of attraction are weaker than solids but are sufficient enough to hold them together hence they possess fluidity and have a definite volume but no definite shape for gases the molecules are separated by large distances hence the intermolecular forces of attraction are weak as a result have neither definite shape nor definite volume fourth point the constituent particles have no translation or rotational motion however they have vibrational motion this is for solids now for liquids their molecules have some translational rotational and vibrational motion now for gases their molecules have large translational rotational and vibrational motion fifth point for solids is solids have high density for liquids density is lower than that of solids but higher than that of gases and gases have low density now next topic is physical properties of liquids there is a general introduction we have already studied about gases in chapter 1 liquid differ from gases in one important aspect that in the state of aggregation of their molecules in the liquid the intermolecular distances are not as large as in the case of gases as a result the intermolecular forces of attraction in case of liquids are much larger as compared to those in case of gases consequently although like gases the liquids have no definite shape like, unlike gases but they have a definite volume because of the difference between the gases and the liquids as not noted above the liquids do not obey any general law as is done by gases however the liquid possesses certain physical properties which are the characteristics of each liquid these properties help us to decide the chemical constitution of each liquid some of the common physical properties of the liquids are vapor pressure surface tension viscosity refractive index optical activity and dipole moment now we shall take up the discussion of first four properties one by one first is vapor pressure its definition suppose some liquid is placed in a in an evacuated vessel connected to a manometer as shown according to kinetic theory of liquids the molecules of the liquids are constantly con sorry constantly moving in different directions with different speeds thus as these molecules are moving with different speeds they possess different kinetic energies at any particular temperature the energy of some of the molecules may be so high they may leave the liquid and come in the space above the liquid this process is called evaporation at the same time at the same time pass uh, passes more and more molecules of the liquid leave the liquid and come in the space above the liquid the molecules thus present above the liquid are called vapor the molecules in the vapor phase are also constantly moving and some of them strike the surface of the liquid and may be recaptured by the liquid this process is called condensation if the liquid is added into the evacuated vessel then initially as there are no molecules of the vapor the rate of condensation is zero however if the temperature is kept constant the evaporation continues at constant rate now with the passage of time as the number of molecules in the vapor phase becomes more and more the rate of condensation also increases ultimately a stage is reached when the rate of condensation becomes equal to the rate of evaporation that is as many molecules reenter into the liquid as leave the liquid at the same time this state is called the state of equilibrium the pressure exerted by the vapor at this stage uh is called vapor pressure or sometimes called saturated vapor pressure as the vapor phase is saturated with vapor at this stage hence vapor pressure of a liquid at any temperature may be defined as the pressure exerted by the vapor present above the liquid in equilibrium with the liquid at that temperature next is some important results some important results related with the process of evaporation are given below first is cooling caused by evaporation 
when a liquid evaporates the more energetic molecules lift the liquid as a result the average kinetic energy of the remaining liquid decreases and hence the temperature falls second factors affecting vapor pressure two important factors on which the vapor pressure of a liquid depends are first nature of the liquid if the intermolecular forces of attraction in the liquid are weak the molecules can easily leave the liquid and some come into the vapor phase and hence the vapor pressure is higher for example the vapor pressure of ether acetone benzene etc is higher than that of water at the same temperature second is effect of temperature as the temperature of the liquid is increased the number of molecules with higher kinetic energy increases hence the vapor pressure of the liquid increases the effect of temperature on vapor pressure can be studied quantitatively with the help of Croce's Clapeyron equation for the for the vaporization of liquid the equation is written in the form dp by dt is equals to delta hv divided by t uh, b v minus vl where delta hv is equals to latent heat of vaporization of the liquid vv is molar volume of the vapor pressure at temperature t and vl molar vo volume of the liquid at temperature t as vl is very small as compared to vv neglecting vl in comparison to vv equation 1 takes the form dp by dt is equals to delta hv divided by t t vv further assuming that vapor pressure vapor behave like an ideal gas we have pvv is equals to rt or vv is equals to rt by p substituting the value in equation 2 we get dp by dt that is equals to delta hv divided by rt square uh, multiply p or 1 by p dp by dt is equals to delta hv divided by rt square or dln p divided by dt that is equals to delta hv divided by rt square the equation is called clausius clapeyron equation this is commonly expo expressed in another form called integrated form as derived below equation 3 may be written as dln p that is equals to delta hv divided by rt square dt if the vapor pressure changes from p1 to p2 when temperature changes from t1 to t2 then integrating equation 4 between the appropriate limits we get dln p and the powers are p1 p1 to p1 that is equals to integration t1 to t2 uh, delta hv divided by rt square multiply by dt in ln p2 by p1 that is equals to delta hv by r integration that power is from t, uh, limit is from t1 to t2 uh, 1 by t square dt that is equals to delta hv by r bracket starts 1 by t1 minus 1 by t2 or we can write that log p2 by p1 is equals to delta hv divided by 2.303 r bracket starts t2 minus t1 divided by t1 t2 thus knowing delta hv and vapor pressure p1 at temperature t1 the vapor pressure p2 and at temperature t2 can be calculated